Uh, so welcome again for people who were not here half an hour ago when I did my first talk. Um, thanks for coming. At this time I'm going to speak about the Fediverse and uh, Mastodon. Um, well, like before, you guys did not have a picture of me. I didn't change jobs since one hour ago. I'm still system administrator at Red Hat, which is in the open source program office. Uh, I'm mostly helping community project. Uh, and my co-worker and our community manager. And before discussing about Fediverse and Mastodon, I will do a quick uh, recap of the history so far. So, 1971, Elon Musk was born. 2022, he decided to buy Twitter. And everybody leave for Mastodon. I said it was very short. This is a lightning talk, so that's the lightning part. So, yeah, what is Mastodon? Everybody would say it's a kind of elephant. Uh, it's technically white, but it's not what we are discussing about today. It's a social network web application. Um, that's a free software. Obviously, we are the free software conference, so we speak about free software. Started in uh, 2016. Like a lot of projects, it's not named, like a lot of free software projects, it's not named after an animal. For example, Python is not named based on the snack, it's based on monkey Python. So Mastodon is not named based on the elephant, but uh, some US uh, metal uh, band. So go for it. And yeah, a social network using web application, every intranet has it. Like the intranet that we use at Red Hat has some kind of social network, nobody used it. The one before had it, nobody used it. Every product on the market has it, so why is it so special? Well, because it's federated using a protocol called ActivityPub. The name is not important, I just mentioned that for, so you know that it exists. Uh, yeah, but uh, what is the federation? So for people living in Europe, well, Europe is a federation, that's basically people being peer and discussing. The US is a federation. The federation in Star Trek is a federation. And in the case of software, what we have is a setup where every node discuss. So there is no specific central server. In the case of Twitter, well, if someone who is rich decides to smoke too much and buy the company and trash it, well, you can do nothing because it's centralized and he has money and that's it. In the case of Mastodon, worst case, you can buy a server, trash it, and turn out that there is a ton of others, so that's not enough. So how do you work when you have no central server to decide who is who and who discuss? Um, well, it relies on well-known technology, DNS, you know, some things that always work, but uh, you cannot live without it. And a system called Webfinger, because DNS is not enough, so you need more. I, again, just mentioned it's not important to know. And right now, the whole network, which is the Fediverse, it's close to 13,000 nodes. That's a lot. So there is some nodes with one person, uh, for example, mine. There is basically me and maybe a bot account that I never used because it's a social network, but it works also for people who are not very social. And there is bigger nodes, uh, Mastodon Social. That's the amount of people this morning. That's a lot. I mean, it's like the size of Bono or more, maybe. It's definitely bigger than my city. And since it's federated, you can also have multiple software. So Mastodon is one, but uh, there is other. For example, uh, Mobilizon, which is made by French people I know, which is used to do events. So like not do strike, but it could work for that. Owncast, which is a server for doing webcast and uh, streaming. Next cloud that I should not have to present, but I will still present. I can use that because there is um, an activity pub component, so you can chat and microblog from your drive server. There is something called Funkwall, which allows to exchange song. Um, I got that list this morning from Wikipedia, so just go to Wikipedia. There is more space than on my slide, and it's more up to date. And um, yeah, so. One of the interesting parts about federation is that it impacts a lot the culture on the network and uh, everything. So for example, you need to choose an instance because if you go on some place, um, you will discuss with some people. If you go on another place, you will discuss with others. 
since everything is federated, you can each discuss with each other, but there is different rules. You know, it's kind of like 20 years ago, you had to decide your email and not just go to Gmail or Hotmail. You had choice. That's basically the same. And the instances are either divided by language, like if you speak French, maybe you want to speak with other French people instead of going on the Japanese animation instance where you understand nothing. Or sometimes it's by topic. There is a discussion related to free and open source software, something for academics. There is different policy around the instance. Some people who are very strict, some people who are more like very free speech and we welcome Nazi because that's free speech, this kind of stuff. So yeah, you have to pick an instance and it's okay, it's much easier than move around because you also have to pick a city, but uh, here you can just click and move to another place. It do not work like this for, you, for your nationality or this kind of thing. So just pick, if you do not like, move somewhere else. And of course, since it's federated, that means that nobody has power over the other, or I mean, no one has ultimate power, which means that there is new type of drama, uh, which is fascinating in itself. Uh, for example, I gave the example of a free speech instance who say, yeah, we do not care about anything as long as it's legal and if it's legal in the US, that's great. Well, it tends to clash with anarchist instance who, for example, do not like uh, fascist. You know, the whole part of anti-fascist, it's they are against fascist. So they tend to clash and usually what happens is people just blacklist each other and disconnect. And for some reason, it's something that people think is bad. But uh, when you do the count with that much node, that means that there is a million of potential link. So yeah, obviously some of them will be problematic and will be cut. And I remember discussing about that. I'm like, yeah, sure, there is 20 people we can not discuss with 20 other people, but uh, for a million of folks, it's nothing. And yet sometimes it's seen as a big deal. Um, so far, nobody blocked me, but I say nothing, so it's easier. So yeah, and so my talk was mostly for community and official presence of project um, because we had the discussion in the federal community, like people said, oh yeah, we need to be present on uh, Mastodon, which, okay, sure, uh, why not? We are on other social network and it's the one where everybody is going and then the question is, how do we do? So we can start by using an existing server that's easy, you have nothing to do, you just need to create an account. The other problem is you need to find a sustainable server because if it's made by volunteer, well, volunteer tends to have a life outside of uh, their unpaid volunteering. And they also sometimes tend to use crappy hardware, forget to do backup, this kind of thing. So you need to choose or uh, take vacation. Yeah, sometimes volunteers take vacation and nobody's here to restart the server. You need to decide for moderation and reputation. Again, um, it's not great if you have your federal account just uh, next to a Nazi account. So you need to verify that. Um, you need to also match with the local community. Like for example, Fedora would be great with something related to hacking, something related to free software. Not so great about people discussing the French cuisine and its delicacy and interesting stuff. Um, and then there is the question, of how do we know that it's you? Because anybody can create an account anywhere. So you do not just need to say it's me. So there is then another solution, which is using your own domain. Uh, that's my preferred one, because people know that if it's written Fedora project, then it's Fedora. Then you have two choices. The first one, paid hosting. So paid hosting, it's cheap. It's 10 euros per month. The only problem if you are working in a big um, free software company based in the US, well, you have to deal with procurement and it's easily six months of meeting. So yeah, just to spend the uh, 10 euro. Then there is the solution of self-hosting and that's why I'm doing that presentation. So for self-hosting, you can decide to go with Mastodon, which is the default software, the one that everybody follow because everybody use. And the problem is standard whale application. I've seen worse, but uh, it's not because you can torture me with something based on Java and Scala that you 
should have something complicated to force me to do that. So it's like you need Postgres, you need Rails, you need, I guess, Redis and Sidekick and this kind of stuff. So it's pretty doable, but it's still consuming a lot of resource. Or you can use something small. Um, I use a software called GoToSocial, and it's great because it's a static Golang binary. The installation is curl, start. It, does not use, it can use a database, but you can use SQLite, so nothing to do with that. No configuration, everything is done with environment. And if you work at Red Hat for our community, just contact my team and we will be happy to have people to test our deployment. Um, because when there is meeting, I do not listen and I do some work and experimental stuff. So I have already everything deployed for that. And that's just the part about um, deploying, because when you are doing for your own account, you do not share your account. You know, it's like your toothbrush, you do not share them. When you are in a community, you can share the account. You do not share the toothbrush, just the account. So we found that there is two issues. The first one is, how do you post? Because you can pass the password around and it's not secure. And if you do that, I would pretend that I didn't hear you doing that. But um, there is several ways you can use a few services to schedule posts. On Twitter, people use TweetDeck, which is Twitter only. Uh, people were using Hootsuite, which is not working for Mastodon. I know that Buffer support it. There is various tools, one called uh, Mastodon Scheduler, another one called Feed to AP, which take a RSS feed and post on Mastodon, and various bots, or you can write your own. I was supposed to do that for my coworker, but uh, it turned out it's too complicated to authenticate using OOS. So I was just waiting for a single password uh, authentication and it's not yet developed, so I did nothing. And then there is the other issue, which is receiving, because you are going to post and say something and people will try to interact with you, but if it's a bot, well, computer do not answer. ChatGPT is not really answering, it's just pretending to be. So you need to have a notification for that. And again, uh, that's an open problem. Uh, it should not be really too hard. It's basically writing a client, but removing the part where you deal with uh, actual user and UX. So it's mostly getting events and then sending an email. And for some reason, nobody did it yet. Um, but uh, if you want to find something for an intern, I'm ready to give that intern some work to do related to that. We have no budget in my team, so we cannot do that. And that's the end for my uh, presentation. So if you want to contact me, again, I'm not on social network, except Mastodon, but it's my private one, so it's not on the slide. So you can contact me at miscatredat.com or on IRC or internal stuff for Redhead Folk, but uh, that's it. And uh, well, that's the end. That's where you are supposed to upload. <laughs>